All right, so one point of confusion that a lot of people have when it comes to improvising in a minor key is knowing which minor scale to use. And I remember being confused by this as well because there's different minor scales. You have the natural minor scale, then there's the harmonic minor scale, the melodic minor scale, all these sort of intimidating names, and I didn't know which one to use. You get into modes as well. There's minor modes like Dorian mode. And, uh, and so the whole thing was just overwhelming. And once I realized that if you can hear the sounds that those scales make, and a lot of times it's just one note that gives you that sound, then you can use them when you improvise. And so that's what we're gonna talk about in this video is we're gonna give examples of those different scales. And the whole idea behind this is for you to start hearing the scales, not necessarily just looking at them on paper or on a, you know, a tablet or anything. It's hearing the sounds. And once you can hear the sounds, you can start integrating them into your playing. And it's really not that difficult. We're gonna connect it all back to the minor pentatonic scale. If you know what that is, that's gonna be our, our home base. We're gonna start there and we're gonna add some notes to that. And you'll find that all four of the, the scales that we're gonna look at share the same first five notes. So there's this base of five notes that they're all kind of built on. So anyway, in this video, we're gonna go through all of that lesson material. If you'd like to get the extra materials that come with this week's lesson, the MP3 jam tracks, I have four of them, and they're all really long jam tracks, like 20 minutes long, so that you can really practice playing and getting those different sounds. Uh, you can get those, and also a PDF uh, document that I've put together that has uh, the four different scales, the four different minor scales in five different positions of the fretboard. We're going to be looking at one of the five in this video, but if you'd like to get those extra materials, you can get all of those by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP542. All right, so we're going to be in the key of G minor. So we're going to be in this neighborhood. So I'm playing a G minor chord using the E minor shape, but all of the scale notes and everything I'm going to be talking about are in this neighborhood. So I just wanted to kind of get our bearings here. Let's go ahead and start this jam track, and then we're going to start with the minor pentatonic scale, and we'll build it from there. Okay, so I have the jam track that's just looping over and over again in the background. It's playing a G minor chord. And we're gonna start by playing the G minor pentatonic scale, pattern one, the good old home bass. We're gonna let that be our starting point. I'm gonna play up and down that scale, uh, just so you can get the sound in your head of that scale over this jam track. So listen to this. Familiar sound. No bending, I'm just playing up and down. But that's a sound that we're all used to. But watch this, I'm gonna play one extra note or add one extra note to that, it's gonna change everything. So check this out. Listen to how that note reacts to that chord. So I'm still gonna be playing my minor pentatonic scale, but I'm gonna be adding this extra note now. That's the second fret, third string. It's an A note. Now watch this. There it is again, same note, an octave higher, fifth fret, first string. Now I can use that note as a passing note or I can land on it. It works either way. It's also down here. This note, fifth fret, sixth string. So practice playing up and down your minor pentatonic scale with that extra note. Now what we've created here, by the way, is, uh, is the bass. I'm gonna refer to this as the bass, just to make it easy. And the reason I'm calling it the bass, these five notes, by the way. So it's this. Those five notes. Those are the bass notes in all of the, the minor scales we're gonna look at, even Dorian mode. It's the same, those same five notes are in the natural minor scale, the harmonic minor scale, the melodic minor scale, and Dorian mode. They all share those that bass of those five notes. Those are like the core notes for a minor sound. So even if you learn nothing else, you've got the, the core of a minor sound with that. And you can work that extra note into your minor pentatonic scale all over the fretboard. Um, which is in the, the PDF file, by the way. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna stick to this one position. Okay, we're gonna add one more note to this now, and we're gonna complete the natural minor scale. So check this out. 
the, the extra note is here. So it's the fourth fret, second string. So if we add that note to our, uh, our minor pentatonic scale, along with the other note we just added, we now have the natural minor scale. Now watch this. It's down here as well. Sixth fret, fifth string. There's the other note that we added. So now let's start from here. I'll do it slowly. We're gonna start from the third fret, sixth string. We're gonna walk up the, the natural minor scale in this position, in this G minor position using the E minor shape. That's where I'm thinking about it from the cage system. We're gonna start here with our index finger on the third fret. See what a cool sound that is. That natural minor scale sounds a little more sophisticated than just our minor pentatonic. Because it's got those, it's got that one extra note, but then it's got this one. Now this note is a more of a passing note. You don't want to land on that one so much. It doesn't sound so great. See, as it wants to resolve to something else in my to my ear. But what's nice about these little, um, these two extra notes is you can, since they're just a half step away from another note in your pentatonic, you can bend into them or you can use them to bend to another note like this. Doing a half bend. Starting to sound a little David Gilmore-ish, right? Okay, now let's move on. So that's our natural minor scale, playing over the G minor uh, jam track. Let's look at the harmonic minor scale. So it's, remember, it's got the same bass. Those five notes are the same. Those, <laughs> I did it sloppy, but. Those five notes are the same. Um, the difference now between the natural minor scale and the harmonic sc uh, minor scale is one note. Check this out. All of that's the same, but that last note, that, that seventh note, instead of doing this, we're gonna push it up one fret. But instead of playing it up here, which would be awkward and it's getting me out of my position, I'm gonna hit it here. Second fret, first string, to the root. So let's, let, I want you to hear the sound of this. Listen to this. Hear how, it's got kind of a Middle Eastern kind of vibe. It's a little spooky sounding, depending on how you use it. I screwed up there. But that is the sound of the harmonic minor scale. You can see it's it's very close to your natural minor scale. It's just got that one adjustment. But here's the, the cool thing about it. This note, this extra note, is one fret behind your root. So this is gonna be the big light bulb moment for, for this sound, because to me, this note is the harmonic minor scale. That's, if I wanna play, if I'm playing a lead, I could be playing my minor pentatonic scale. And I can work in that one note into my minor pentatonic, and I'm getting that that uh, harmonic minor sound, that vibe of that sound. So this is that same note, just an octave lower. And the way I know that is because this is my root and it's the note right behind it. So that makes it easy to find that sound. So here's my root. There it is, the one note behind it. So if I'm improvising a lead and I'm just staying in the minor pentatonic scale, I can work that in without having to think about that other scale. I'm just thinking, ah, oh, it's that one note. That's the, that's the feel of the harmonic minor scale to me, is that one note. Now, moving on to the melodic minor. Uh, the melodic minor has the same bass. 
those first five notes. It's also got that uh, that uh, sharp seven or whatever, the, however you want to think about it, the note right behind the root. It's got that same note too, but it's got this. So it comes up to the fifth fret second string. So if I played up the scale, up the melodic minor scale, it sounds like this. It's a different sound than if I went like this. Here, see what a big interval jump that is? That's the sound of the harmonic minor. The melodic minor sounds like that. Now here's the weird thing about the melodic minor is you can't walk back down. You're not supposed to use the same notes going back down it. You're supposed to go down the natural minor scale. So you walk up like this, but you walk down like this. It's kind of weird. It's just the way that that was. And it kind of makes sense to me because it sounds like a major scale. When you hear it going down, it, it doesn't have the reference of the other notes. But let me just some, let me make this easy because I, I can already sense some overwhelm from some of you. The way that I think about the melodic minor scale and the harmonic minor scale, if I'm really just summarizing it and just buttoning it up and making it easy, it's this. Because they both have that sound. And to me, that is what we're really going for. So if I'm playing and uh, uh, improvising a lead and I want that kind of melodic minor slash harmonic, to me, I just sort of lump those two almost together. That's how I get at it. Um, so anyway, that's a, that's a very quick summary of natural minor scale, uh, melodic minor scale, and the harmonic minor scale. Let's take a look at one more since we're on this. We got the jam track playing. Let's look at Dorian mode. Now it has the same bass, which is nice. And it shares one of the notes, uh, that, that extra note that I just showed you from the, the uh, melodic minor. It has that note, fifth fret, second string. But then it doesn't have that note behind the root, that, that seventh note. Its note is uh, the same as the natural minor scale, which is here, sixth fret, second string. So it goes like this. That's what the sound of Dorian mode is. And if you're just, for those of you that are visual learners, um, actually I'll put a lesson up on the screen where I, I go through this pattern, but let me just show you this pattern. It's very simple because it's so symmetrical, but watch this. So you can see on the, on the first two strings, I go six, five, three, six, five, three. And then on the uh, strings three and four, I go five, three, two, five, three, two. And that's all Dorian mode. And you can connect it to your minor pentatonic scale or just to your G minor chord using the E minor shape, whatever's easiest in your brain to kind of connect it so that you can play this any, anytime you need it. But this, what I love about that is I can do these half bends. Well, that one didn't sound very good. But these little half bends are really nice to color that sound. But the, if I wanted to summarize the sound of Dorian mode, it's this note. That's the note. That one note is Dorian mode to me. So whether I'm playing my uh, natural minor scale or my minor pentatonic scale or doing something else, if I want to shift into Dorian mode, even just for a second, like that, I can just hit that note, I'm in Dorian mode. But don't let the note, don't let the names of these scales, you know, Dorian, melodic minor, harmonic minor, that they're just names, they're just labels. The, what you're really going for is sounds. And there's no rule that says, I have to use 
uh, you know, this here or there. It's it's whatever your ear tells you. Now, this is made, this is the easy part when we're doing it all over one chord like this. We have a G chord, G minor chord that's just looping. What happens now in more of a real world scenario when we've got multiple chords? Let's take a look at that. We're gonna now play along with a G minor, C minor, and a D minor. And you're gonna find that some of these chords are, some of these scales are gonna work and some aren't. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so this jam track's looping. It's got three chords in it, G minor, C minor, D minor. Now, all of those chords are in the same chord family, the chord family of G minor. So they're all gonna, so I could play the same scale over each of those chords. I can play the, the G minor scale, G natural minor scale, and it should work. Let's listen to it. And that sounds pretty good. So what if I were to play the G um, harmonic minor scale over this? Let's see what that sounds like. Remember the bass is the same. Those first five notes. Mm, that kind of works. That works over the four chord. Oh, that, that doesn't work there because I played, that was a D minor chord. The minor chord had that minor third in it. This this note, and then that note is a, would be like a major third, like, like from a D major. And so that's why that's gonna clash. So that note is is out, at least for the five chord, that, that minor five. Um, same would be true with the melodic minor because it has that note as well. And actually, listen to the mel melodic minor. It has this note in it, that E note, 5th fret 2nd string, is, which is a direct clash over the minor 4 chord. See, so listen to how awful that sounds. So that's out. And that note is also in Dorian mode, so Dorian mode would be out. Um, the first five notes of each of those scales obviously are going to work, but then you get into those last two and they become kind of problematic. Uh, only the natural minor scale worked properly over each of the uh, the three chords there. This is why the, the minor pentatonic scales are so popular because remember the pentatonic scales only have five notes. It we Somebody decided to get rid of those two problematic notes. You just have the core notes that are gonna work over anything. That's minor pentatonic scale. And that's why they're so popular. You don't have to second guess this stuff. But don't let the, um, you know, the, the, don't let the theory weigh you down. Just use your ear and don't, don't, you don't have to get out a book or anything. You can, your ear can tell you if, if a note's going to work. You can tell that that doesn't work. So you'd have to adjust, you know, and come to the note that does work. Let's listen to the same jam track now, but with a major five chord. Uh, which can happen when you're playing in a minor key. It can it can either be minor like this, or you can make it major. That's another option. Let's listen to that. Okay, so I have the jam track playing now. Same three chords: G minor, C minor. But the the five chord is a D seven. So here it is. All right. So it's a different sound. Um, let's start off by playing the natural minor scale. We'll just see how that reacts to these three. So far, so good. So that works pretty well. The natural minor scale is, is flexible and, and works over whether the song has a major five chord or it's a minor five chord. So that's reassuring. Let's try the harmonic minor. Ah, that worked pretty good that time. Remember when we played it the first time with the minor five, it didn't work so well. Here it is again. So that's a really good fit. It fits perfectly because that note is the third interval of your five chord. Right here. This note, right? So it matches perfectly with that chord. Um, and if I were using that, here's a here's a, just a little sidebar for how to use it, um, it without even thinking about that scale. Is just play minor pentatonic, and then right there, 
I went into the harmonic minor, but how did I do that? Remember, you just find your root, the G note, and you go one fret behind it. That's it. You could do it up here. And that's a nice little way to get out of the minor pentatonic scale and sound a little more sophisticated. Um, so the melodic minor is not gonna work because of that, uh, the minor uh, four chord there, as we talked about in the first video. Same is true with Dorian mode. Those are not gonna work. It's not gonna be a good fit, at least uh, if we're playing in the key of the song. Okay, so now we have a new jam track that's playing, and it only has two chords. The previous ones had three. This is going from a G minor to a C7 chord. So remember in the previous two jam tracks, our four chord was a minor, it was a C minor. But now we have a C major. So let me just start. We'll start with a natural minor scale. Just I want you to hear what it sounds like over something like this. Ooh, that doesn't sound so good, right? It sounded great over the first two. So that's not going to work. Um, so um, because of this note, which is clashing. And so that note is also in our uh, harmonic minor. So that means the harmonic minor is not going to work. So those two are out. Uh, what about Dorian mode? Let's check that out. Ah, that's a perfect fit. And so what's nice is I can land on that note. Now, why does that work so well? Why does Dorian work so well over this scenario? It's because the four chord is major. Remember the previous one, it was minor. So you're, I'm talking about the C chord. So the C chord has, since it's major in this case, that's the major third of your C, of your, uh, C chord. And so that, that note from Dorian fits perfectly over that. Whereas before it was minor and it just was a clash. Um, so that's a good fit. Um, the melodic minor has that same note from Dorian, but then it has this note, from, which is the one from uh, you know your harmonic minor, right behind the one chord. Not such a great fit. It doesn't sound so good. You could get away with it, like in certain spots it kind of works, but. Um, but I think the perfect scale in this situation would be Dorian. And the way that I would find that out is just by new, going through them and sort of, you know, messing around. So you don't always know, especially if the song has lots of chords. You don't, you don't have time to sit and like map it out on paper. You just use your ear. But I like to start with the minor pentatonic scale. I always start there. Listen to how good that fits. And then I can work in that, that note. Remember that one note? That's the Dorian sound. So just remember, when it comes to improvising using these minor scales, it's all about the sound. That's what you're chasing. It's not the label of the scale or how the scale was created or any of those things. It's about how it sounds. And if you can recreate that sound in real time when you're improvising, um, you, you've achieved your goal. And remember, a lot of times it's just one note that can color it. You could even be playing your minor pentatonic scale, but if you hit that one note from the harmonic minor scale, it sounds like the harmonic minor scale, same is true with Dorian mode. It's got that one note that defines the feeling of that scale. And so a, a really good way to practice this is to take the different jam tracks. You know, I have, uh, you know, four of them, but take the one with the, uh, the one chord, the G minor chord that just loops over and over again, which I've made loop for 20 minutes. I did that on purpose. So you have a lot of time to really explore. Take that jam track and just play with these different sounds just over and over again, trying to relate them back to things you're already familiar with, like licks that you already know from the minor pentatonic scale or whatever. Maybe it's chord shapes, but whatever works best for you. All right, we'll see you next week for something new.